name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Our Lady, Mother of Mercy, St. Joseph, St. Padre Pio, our patron saints and guardian angels, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In 2018 will be the 50th anniversary of the death of St. Padre Pio, so it seems hard to believe that it's been that long since he is passed away from us. He lived for 50 years with the stigmata, as we know, marked in his body, just like uh, St. Saint, Saint Francis in his day. Padre Pio was like a living crucifix. And, you know, the, the time in which he lived, you know, the, the early 20th century and up until 1968 was, you know, the big move for scientism. You know, science was the rage. You know, all these things were going preparing to go to the moon. And so science was kind of becoming very, uh, you know, dogmatized, be, being very almost idolized by, by people. And today it still even has more so that scientific kind of idolatry was beginning in his day and it's still progressing to some degree today. People still worship science as their, you know, science is everything for them. And God raised up Padre Pio with these stigmata in his body, which caused the scientists to wonder. They couldn't explain it. Even, you know, Padre Pio one time complained. Some psychologist came to him and said, well, it's because of your meditating on the passion of our Lord that you psychosomatically have caused these wounds in your body. And he said to the, sci to the psychologist, if I were to meditate on a bull, would I grow horns? <laughs> he was quite the character. But um, St. Pio was raised up at a time to also draw people to the confessional. And people came to him maybe because they wanted to see these wonders that God had worked in his body. But that seemed to be the bait, you might say, that God used to draw them into the confessional. Because once they got there and saw this, this man who was marked with the passion and saw him celebrate the mass and undergo the passion while he was offering mass. You know, I, that's the thing that I sometimes wonder about those who think that, you know, the, that the passion uh, isn't being, we're not there at Calvary when we celebrate mass. You know, Padre Pio seemed to be an indication that he was undergoing extreme suffering while he was offering mass as if he wasn't just there as a priest uh, offering it, but he was being offered in union with Christ on the cross. And uh, that brought them to him, and then he got them into the confessional where he was able to give them that mercy that God wants us all to receive, the, the grace of that blood and water that flowed from his side on Calvary was then poured out on each and every one of those who come to confession. And I think so many people today um, still today are very much, you know, afraid of the confessional. They think that, oh, that the priest in there is going to, you know, he's going to execute me. You know, it's like they are afraid to go into the confessional because they think it's an execution block. But that, the only thing that's hopefully going to be killed in the confessional is the sins and washed away. That it really is the tribunal of God's mercy. And Padre Pio Sometimes he had to be harsh with a penitent because they were lying or they were trying to, you know, try to get something by him or, or they weren't there for the right reason in the confessional. They were just trying to maybe see, you know, if he really had uh, any kind of ability to read the hearts of them and he would read their hearts and he would tell them, get out, come back when you're really sorry, you know. Uh, but most of the time and probably 99% of the time, when people went into the confessional, they met a man who was truly a merciful heart, a tender confessor, one who really was concerned about their salvation. And most people, their confessions only lasted five minutes. And when we think of the, how often he touched people's hearts and their lives, he only had five minutes for the most part to speak to them or to even counsel them. But 
he um, affected a, a great good in the confessional. You know, there's kind of two pulpits in the priesthood. There's the pulpit that is here in the church, and then there's the pulpit in the confessional, because many times that's the only time to preach to someone one-on-one, -on -one, to instruct them or to move them or to to evangelize them even in the confessional because maybe they haven't been for a long time and it's the only time they're going to hear something that is going to be to help them get back on the right path or to convince them that they need to give up their sinful life. And it was always said that a priest should be a lion, on the, a lion in the pulpit and a lamb in the confessional to help lead souls back to Christ. And uh, that is, I think, what Padre Pio did very well in the confessional. He, I don't recall that Padre Pio ever preached very many homilies. I don't think there's too many homilies recorded that Padre Pio ever gave. But most of his preaching was done through letters, through the people meeting him, those quick moments that they may have met him in the, in the sacristy or when he would talk to pilgrims who came to see him on his way through the crowds, you know, he would say little things to, that would inspire people or he would be drawn to point out to someone and say something that they needed to hear. So he truly was an instrument of God's grace. And when you think of all the letters he wrote to his spiritual children, that's where his teaching and his preaching was put into effect in leading and guiding and sanctifying souls in that way. So today, you know, some people think that somehow the church hasn't been merciful. Well, the church has always been merciful. The church, probably in every age of, the, of history, is the only one that probably has been true to being merciful. As I look out at the world, I think that the world is becoming less merciful. With the Planned Parenthood politicians running rampant, uh, that seems like more and more our society and our culture is becoming more hardened and less compassionate and more... Uh, uh, unmerciful towards our neighbor. It's the church is the only real beacon of God's mercy in our world today. It's the only place where people can know that they can find uh, redemption and God's forgiveness and his mercy. And uh, I think that that's uh, something that we need to be mindful of, that we're a beacon of hope and a, and a source and a place where people can receive God's mercy and that we need to continue to proclaim that because someday those people who have been out there promoting the culture of death will be looking for that mercy that they have been denying others. And like God, our Father, who is so merciful, we have to be there to welcome back his prodigal sons and daughters and to receive them and give them God's mercy. As we know, mercy is something we do not deserve is something that God wishes to grant to us because he is truly a loving father. And uh, we have Our Lady, who is the personification of God's mercy, uh, to even further uh, draw us to, to receive mercy and healing and being restored to that friendship with God. Let us pray through the intercession of St. Padre Pio and Our Lady of Mercy that you know, the priests especially who are to be apostles of God's mercy, but all of us during this year of mercy will see ways in which we can be more um, proactive in being instruments of God's mercy <clears throat> in the corporal and spiritual works of mercy and just in encouraging maybe a relative or friend if we, because of their, maybe their laziness or whatever reason stopped going to confession just to encourage them once again to come back to that that beautiful tribunal of God's mercy and re, and be healed and restored from uh, their their sinful ways and ask um, especially this grace for sinners during this time in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit amen